so welcome to my session, uh, completely automate and managed Windows software forever. Very long title. Um, so who am I? I uh, go by Dan the Builder on Twitter. Um, my full-time job is uh, I'm just a systems engineer at a place called the Institute for Advanced Study. Um, it's a pretty unique place, actually. It's where um, Albert Einstein was faculty uh, up until his, his death in New Jersey. Um, so what we do, um, just to give you some organizational context, um, we're pretty small, but we bring scholars from around the world to do their own research. Uh, so we're there really just to provide them with IT resources to do what they need to do. Um, so there I do a lot of Windows, uh, obviously PowerShell. We use some Puppet, VMware, and Chocolate is something that we've been using uh, for a couple of years now. Um, on the side, I do a lot of freelance writing for various sites. Um, I've written a lot about Chocolate and PowerShell. Um, those are two of my passions to write about, so uh, whenever someone wants to pay me, I'll definitely write about that. Um, those are my contact, uh, so if you want to uh, reach out to me, please do so. So the agenda, um, so show of hands, who has actually used Chocolatey here? Okay, so that's almost everybody. <laughs> so I'm gonna do some introductory stuff on just what Chocolatey is for people who aren't familiar with it, um, just to get them up to speed so the rest of it makes sense. Um, so we're gonna talk about what Chocolatey is, what internalizing is, how to do that, um, <clears throat> how to go about up upgrading your Chocolatey clients. Uh, you can do that in various ways, obviously. Um, what I'll show is uh, some really basic PowerShell remoting and uh, box starter, which is um, something that uh, a lot of people use for, for this process too. And at the end, we'll do some Q and A. Um, so there's a funny story behind this picture. <clears throat> so last year was actually my first summit, and when I came here, I was like, I had really no expectations. Uh, I wasn't really looking to network. Um, so much I was looking just to look at some content and look at some cool PowerShell stuff. And so I was, um, I was outside in the hallway one day and I happened to see Snover because I didn't really think he'd be so accessible like everybody else in the community. Um, so he was talking to some, a group of people and I was kind of waiting for that conversation to end so I can kind of introduce myself and like, you know, meet one of my heroes. Um, and so it stopped and he went right into the bathroom. I'm like, oh, great. Uh, so I, you know, I kind of strutted around the bathroom, waiting for him to come out like a creep. And um, <laughs> so and finally he kind of emerges, and I'm like, yes, I could finally meet him. So I go up to him, and I'm like, hi, you know, I'm, I'm Dan. I'm, you know, a big fan. I'm so glad to meet you. And, um, you know, he's a really nice guy. And, uh, and then my mind just went blank. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have no idea what to ask, ask this guy. And the first thing that came to my mind was like, so what do you do all day? <laughs> so, and that was the picture I took after him. He was very cool about it. He was, didn't even really flinch. Um, so he didn't take it the wrong way, thankfully. Um, so yeah, friends don't let friends install software with a GUI. We all do PowerShell here. If you install software with a GUI, it's like kind of just against the law at this point. Um, you shouldn't be doing it. Don't let your friends do it. Use any means necessary to not do it. So uh, I'm sure Rob Reynolds, if he's here, is going to like this one. Um, I believe that managing software in Windows is a solved problem with Chocolatey. I think everyone should be using it at this point. I think it should be the kind of de facto thing you do to install. Um, it's, that, it's that good, and it's that much better than the other solutions out there. <coughs> um, so my goals, um, when I first started using Chocolatey, I was kind of looking at how it works. and. Um, you know, for my Windows machines, I wanted to, you know, automate the initial deployment of software to my new machines, automate, um, you know, the process of upgrading all these packages when new versions are released, um, enable my end users to install stuff, which you could do with self-service, and obviously rarely, rarely um, intervene myself. So all this stuff would happen in the background, uh, so I didn't have to, like, really deal with new software coming out. It would just automatically be pushed out. Um, and in my case, I was able to do that. Uh, okay, so if anybody's used Chocolatey, you might as well just like go brain dead for 10 minutes so I can introdu introduce it. Um, so the best way I can describe it is it's a wrapper around Windows installers. Um, not just installers, but other, you know, if you install features through Windows. Um, it takes, you know, these MSIs or EXEs and makes it really easy 
to install it silently. Um, in addition to that, it's a really small piece of software on a machine that you use with a CLI. Uh, you can use a GUI as well, uh, but most of us probably won't do that. Um, so, and one of the, the great things about Chocolaty is the community repo. Um, so for those of you who haven't used it, there's thousands of packages already on the repo that are being maintained, and the installation process is already scripted for you. Uh, so you can easily um, install software, and, and for the most part, it should install correctly uh, without having to do anything. And there's some really cool PowerShell stuff in that directory as well. Um, they've written some cool scripts to um, uh, just automate this process that you can look at and definitely learn some things. <clears throat> So what is the NuGet package? Um, it's basically a zip file. And inside that zip file, um, when you create it, there are some install files. Um, they could be remotely, could be locally. Uh, a new spec, which is your metadata for the package. Um, so you're going to see, I'll show that in a second, but um, a lot of the, the version, the name of the package, the description of what it is, um, dependencies, and then the chocolate install PowerShell script, which is the install logic, so it's basically just a PowerShell script that will um, uh, do whatever you need to do to install a piece of software. So if you look at this, um, this is the, a very simple chocolatey install script. So you can see it's um, really just a hash table. It's, it's taking um, the URL for its package Atom, uh, looking to GitHub for that. Um, it uses a silent argument, argument for that uh, as a checksum, which it checks to make sure it's the right installer and it calls install chocolatey package at the end. A new spec file, um, this is for curl. Um, I deleted some of the, the description because it was too long. Uh, but you can see as a version, the title, um, license URL, summary, all the things that you uh, would want to understand what you're actually installing. So why do we use it? So um, as most people know, it's a universal CLI, so there's no more installing things with MSI exec or having to figure out what the silent parameters are for a given installation. It's all kind of behind the scenes. So when you install something, it's the same. Chaco install package name. Uh, it'll work the same way every time, or it should. Um, so it's, a, you know, it's just a really nice way to you know, install things and manage them. Um, so installing and upgrading things, you can do it in one command. You can install 10 pieces of software with one command, Chaco install, and then pass 10 package names to it, and it'll install all of them uh, with that. <coughs> um, so given it's a CLI, if you want to make scripts out of the chocolatey, it's very easy to do. Uh, you could throw it in a PowerShell script or use whatever you want. And it does a lot of really good integration with configuration management. So DevOps community is obviously using this quite a lot. Um, install dev modules for Puppet, Ansible, Salt, all of the, uh, the big players in that arena. Some common commands, Jocko list, install, upgrade, uninstall. So these are the, some of the common ones you're going to use to manage your own uh, chocolatey packages on your machine. I know. Yeah, so the dash Y, um, that's really just to uh, accept any prompts that comes up when you install or uninstall. So this is a very uh, simple demo here. For the newbies. So we're going to do a Chaco list. Uh, so that is going to just um, show that we have Google Chrome installed with that version, 74.0, yada, yada. And I'll kind of just go through this video, but um, <clears throat> first we're going to uninstall it, so it'll run an uninstaller to uninstall Google, and then we'll install it back. So uh, you can see it kind of is somewhat verbose by default in terms of what it's doing, but at least you get an idea of uh, how that process is going. Um, so you can see it's installing Google standalone, so it's downloading that from uh, your repository in the Google in the uh, NuGet package and installing it. Okay, so internalizing. 
So we have the community repo, and it has thousands of packages. They're already done. Um, but the problem is you probably don't want your clients reaching out there for every time they install a package, right? Because it's in the internet, for one. Um, you're going to deal with bandwidth issues. Um, there's some other legality things that Chocolatey makes you aware of that you probably shouldn't be using for, in an enterprise manner. Uh, so we want to kind of leverage those and internalize those. So the process of that, um, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. So um, the good thing is that the majority of packages are already there, right? And when a new version is released, they get it there pretty quickly, um, especially the popular stuff. Uh, you know, it's usually there within like a day. So at that point, you could actually leverage that and install a new package or new version on your machines. Um, the other kind of downside is it's installing, it's downloading the installers from an official distribution point. Uh, for instance, if you're doing Firefox, it's going to download it from Mozilla. Um, you know, not the greatest thing in the world in terms of installing a package, obviously. You want your stuff embedded in something locally that you can download faster. Uh, so I kind of went through this already. It's going to download a package from the community repo in terms of in, um, internalizing. It's going to, uh, the most important part, change the, the chocolatey install script to look locally instead of um, out into the internet so you can install it. And that way you kind of have everything you need in one little zip file. Uh, you put it on your internal repo and when you install, it takes down everything from your own servers and not really from the internet at all. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, at least, I mean, the open source version, not really, you kind of have to do it your own. Um, I've, I've been using the licensed version of Chocolate, and it does do everything for you with one command, so it's nice. Um, that, that was one of the big selling points for me. Um, so this is a good illustration here. So on the top, we have a community re um, package, of a package called Atom. And the URL, you can see, is GitHub. That's where it's going to find the installer and download it to install. Um, and in the bottom, is internalized. So we can see um, in the PowerShell script, it's looking internally into its own files directory for the same installer. Uh, checksum is the same. The silent arguments are the same. Uh, but most importantly, now it's going to look internally and not do the internet to install. So this is kind of an overview of the, the process we use. So we'll start at the top. When a new community package uh, version is released, um, we first want to find that on a test machine. Um, we're going to internalize that package on a, on a test machine, um, test to make sure the installation is, uh, works, obviously. Then push it, if that's successful, push it to our internal repo. Um, the last two things that we'll talk about is we can just schedule an upgrade. Um, so in, in my uh, environment, it's fairly small, and for the most part, the packages I have internalized, I want to push out immediately when a new version is released, especially if it's something you know, like Chrome or Firefox where there may be some security stuff in there that we want to make sure our clients have right away. And then obviously we run the upgrade on our clients. So internal repos, um, how do you do this? So there's a lot of solutions for this. You could do something as simple as a share. You can set up a SIF share and just put packages in it and put your clients to it and they'll download from there. Um, if you want something a little bit uh, more professional, uh, ProGet, Artifactory, and MyGet are three uh, pretty popular ones. And they all sort of work the same way as the Chocolate Community Repo, where you can just point to it, it'll you know, download what you want and install. Uh, what we use is the Chocolate Simple server. Well, it was actually renamed, I guess. Um, and that really is, it's actually a chocolatey package that it'll stand up an IES server for you um, and kind of go through the process of doing everything you need to do to have the repo ready and up. And, um, you know, it works fairly well with Puppet especially. Uh, we used it to stand that up and it was like, the only thing I had to do outside of that was some more custom things, like put a certificate on it. Um, but then you have, you know, a repo ready to go. Um, what we tend to do is we try to separate those between internalized packages and more licensed stuff like Office or Adobe Suite. Um, things we don't want our machines to have access to at all times. We only want to give it access to when they need it. Um, so we kind of separate those into two different web servers that our clients will, will use to install packages from. 
So again, this is sort of the overall setup. Community repo, we have a chocolatey test machine, and then it's going to push to a private repo. Um, so what happened was, does anybody have PowerShell code here that they've created that's absolute garbage that they're using in production? OK, a lot of liars out there. Interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I have that, obviously. And that was actually the script I was going to show. Um, I had it on GitHub for a while. I know some people had used it to sort of um, use it as the process of internalizing the package and pushing it. But it was just like one function, and it was just kind of a piece of crap. So I, I, uh, the last week, I kind of rewrote something into, it's not finalized, but it's more publicly consumable, I'd say. And it's really just a wrapper around the chocolatey commands that uh, do the internalizing. Uh, and it also has, I've thrown in some box starter remoting stuff that I'll show you later on as well. Um, but it's going to definitely help you if you're new to internalizing. Um, you can use it all in one pipeline to do the entire process for a given package. Uh, so this is sort of an overview of it. So on the left, we see this is all happening on the test machine. It's going to find an outdated package, download, internalize, test to make sure it's what you want it to be, and then push it to your private repo. Um, on the right, we see the chocolatey CLI command. So choco outdated. Um, Choco download is the uh, command it uses to actually just download and internalize the package. It's all in one shot. Um, Choco upgrade um, and Choco push. And on the right, these are the, uh, the functions that I created to do that. So let's do a demo. Hopefully this works because the video wasn't really doing much before. Oh, that's not good. Oh, jeez. Let's try that again. Oh. The demo gods. I mean, I recorded them, too. What are the chances? I did. <laughs> That's what made it go green. Um, all right, so I'll kind of just show you from, from this standpoint. Um, up here, we have, um, it's going to just use a variable um, outdated packages, and it's going to take uh, get Chaco outdated packages, uh, get what you uh, what's outdated on the, on the machine. So it's going to take it, look at all of your local installs of Chocolatey, and then look to see uh, what's available in the community repo. Um, invoke Chaco internalized package. Um, it just takes that output um, and basically internalizes whatever it found. And I pipe this to where object just to make sure the result is something that was successful. Um, invoke Chaco upgrade. That's going to take the same thing and just upgrade the, those packages internalized and make sure they're, uh, they were successful as well. And then push them with push Chaco uh, int package um, to your, your local repo. So sorry it didn't work. If anybody wants to see that, um, just come to me after the session. We'll take a look at that. So upgrading packages. Uh, what is needed? So at the very simplest, you know, there's a million things you could solutions to upgrade a machine. Um, but what I use is just Chocolatey, PowerShell with remoting, um, or you could use Box Starter as well. Um, these are all like, you know, free tools depending on if you have the license for Chocolatey or not. And task scheduler. Um, so, what we do here, um, so the requirements for my org, um, we don't want to disrupt end users. So, when we're talking about Windows endpoints, um, we only really want to upgrade stuff on the weekends unless it's a security related thing that we want to push out right away. Um, so, that's sort of requirement we had to deal with. Um, and let's see here. So what we did was if there's certain packages that meet, um, you know, for instance, the browsers, we kind of want to push that out right away. If there's other things that looks like security, we want to push it out right away. But what we want to do is actually just look at a list of packages and to see if it meets, if the internalization process uh, has one of these, we want to schedule uh, an upgrade right away and do that. So we do everything at once. Uh, we don't have a huge fleet of windows. so. It's just one job that does like, you know, right now it does um, 
and invoke command and just installs uh, everything it needs to. And of course, this video is probably not going to work either, so let me try. Oh, it actually did. Cool. All right, so, um, so the, uh, the commands I just showed you, we're actually just going to pipe them all together. So you can, they can accept pipeline input from each other. And uh, the last process here, this um, test chocolate upgrade trigger, it's going to look for Google Chrome. So if it finds that um, you pushed Google Chrome to your repo, it's going to basically trigger a scheduled upgrade uh, that day. At this point, it's 12 PM. Obviously, you wouldn't probably use that time. Um, and you could point a script to it. So if you have a PowerShell script that you just use, uh, you know, if you want to point to it, you can use it there as well. And let's see if we can see the final. Uh, so you can see the, uh, it took a while to do, but the final output here is just it created a scheduled task. And the task name is triggered Chaco upgrade. Uh, but the real logic here is the test chocolate upgrade trigger. So it's just going to take whatever internalized packages you have, um, see if they contain whatever packages you pass to it, and if so, you can schedule an upgrade. So again, you could use invoke command. That's one way to do it. Um, you know, we do it all simultaneously. Uh, with this next thing, I'll show you a function. You can, um, you could. Exclude or include packages. So if you have a new uh, package that you want to send out to all your clients, you can throw that in there, and it can uh, be pushed out as well. Or if you want to exclude packages, uh, you can do that as well. I use, um, if you're going to do PowerShell, you could do test uh, pending reboot. Uh, that just does a test on any given machine. And if it has a reboot pending, you can restart it. Uh, let's see here. So <clears throat> the function here, invoke Chaco remote upgrade. Um, again, the only parameters it really takes that are interesting are the additional packages and excluded packages. So uh, for a given uh, job, you can, again, include packages you want to push out, or if you can, you can exclude ones that you don't want to uh, push out as well. And let's see here. Remind me never to record demos again. This is a horrible idea. Um, yeah, so the, the, the final output is something like this. So it'll give you a PS object of the computer, which is the computer it's running on, um, the name of the package, and it's, if it was successful or not. Uh, so it's a pretty, really easy way just to upgrade things uh, simultaneously at once. What's that? Um, it was, this might have been local, actually. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's, that's the reason I actually recorded them, to avoid that. <laughs> so this is uh, a good le lesson to learn. It's funny, because I was talking to uh, Anthony over here, and he told me not to record them. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, so box starter. Uh, does anybody use box starter here? A couple of people. Box starter is really cool. So it's um, and it was actually made by is he here somewhere? Is Matt in here? There he is. So Matt uh, actually made box starter. It's something that I just started kind of messing around with, but it's really cool. Um, so it uses Chocolatey by default. You can pass packages to it to install. Um, one of the great things about it that I think is really super cool is you can create a, a text file or gist, um, pass it to Box Starter, and it will take that and just install everything in that file. Um, but the trick is it'll reboot when it needs to. So it'll sequentially go by each line, see if you have 10 packages you want to install, and you can do Chaco install a package. Um, it'll do each one, and if it needs to reboot, it'll do that and continue on. Uh, so you can literally, you know, Upgrade, or if you had a new machine, point it to adjust and 
be done. You know, configure everything at once. So it's pretty cool stuff. That's a good question. Anybody know? <laughs> um, how, how does it reboot? It just checks for basically just checks for pending checks for pending users. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sure. Um, yeah, so box starter is really cool. So uh, one of the things I threw in GitHub was a, a function around box starter that you can sort of dynamically create um, a list of packages um, for each machine. Uh, so what it's going to do is, um, if you pass, uh, you know, an array of packages, it will first do a Chaco outdated on itself to see, okay, I need to. And, upgrade to these packages, uh, but also take um, other packages, include them in a text file, and then obviously, since it's reboot resilient, do all of those uh, sequentially and, and reboot if it needs to. Uh, let's see. So, let's see if it'll actually show, give me something to work with here. All right. So you can see, um, I want to push out in addition to whatever it needs to upgrade, curl and git. That's in the additional packages parameter. And I want to exclude Java. So what it's going to do is it's going to take, again, anything that's outdated on the machine um, and anything additional and put it into one file dynamically. So I'll show you kind of the end result of this, but and you can see that um, box starter output is pretty verbose as well. It'll show you a lot of stuff of what it's doing. I hate computers. All right. So um, installed everything. So the endpoint, I just did a get content on the script it actually uses to install. And you can see um, it did these three lines of code. So it upgraded curl, Google Chrome, and Git. And um, that's pretty much it. That's, that's, it's a really simple way to do it. It just takes um, mixed into an array, adds in packages, and it's kind of ready to go. Uh, so the final thing, when do I actually intervene? when something breaks, obviously. Um, internalizing, you'll find there are certain packages that just don't internalize easily. Um, and you'll have to go in and kind of do it yourself or you know, figure out to maybe use a chocolatey template that, to redo it. Um, obviously, when packages fail on the client, I have to you know, kind of manually go in and figure out why that happened. If you want to create packages that aren't in a community repo, that's obviously something you have to do on your end. Um, especially if they're not like, you know, accessible through the web. Um, Chaco has a really good, um, I don't know if it's a module, but a, AU, which is an automatic upgrade. So you can basically um, take a package um, and um, create it when a new version is released and to any URL you want to use. Um, I haven't really used it much, but it looks pretty cool. And I usually email results to every, every upgrade job, every internalizing job, so I can see what's going on. So yeah. Any questions? Cool. Well, thank you so much. <laughs>